G'day friends, welcome to day 30 of Mermaid 2018. I know it's super sad. 30, then 31, and done. I'm not gonna lie, I'm looking forward to a short little hiatus <laughs> from not so much YouTube or even creating. It is literally just the editing part that really kind of bugs me. I am, um, and I have simplified the editing process, believe me. <laughs> but um, it, it's still a chore nonetheless. It's the exporting. I've since run, like, obviously, like making lots of videos, you have to have a place to store them. I've got two full hard drives that are full of all of my James Luke Boat creative YouTube videos, and one of them just filled up again. So now I have to, like, re remake a new library and get a new hard drive. So I've been saving to these to my desktop, which is, like, kind of slowing down the computer a little bit. and. I um, probably should have gotten on that sooner when I knew it was going to be a problem, but this is the price you pay for, <laughs> for trying to be naive, <laughs> to trying to fake naive. I knew it was going to be a problem. I should have just handled it, but um, now I'm sitting in the trauma of that, which is not traumatic at all. Let's be honest. Um, I'm having a really great day. This is a piece that I honestly thought I wouldn't do, or if I did it, I would save it for the end because... The Neverland Mermaids from Peter Pan are the reason that I love mermaids in the first place. The whole, we're only trying to drown her, uh, that just speaks to me. I think <laughs> the aesthetic of them is just 100% perfection in the movie. I could not have imagined better mermaids in my head. So I love, love, love them. But at the same time, I get a little bit stressed or tense when I create um, pieces based on or just draw or sketch or illustrate or paint, whatever. Uh, when I create pieces based on things that are already perfect in my mind. I find it hard to reinterpret them because I don't need them reinterpreted, right? Like I don't need to find a new spin on it. I love how it is. Um, I'm just like that. I, I know Steve would vouch for that. Um, I don't love change in that way, but it is, it's important to try and like, to be honest, I do enjoy it, but I don't enjoy it as much as I think you're supposed to. Like, I think you're supposed to love drawing the things that you you love the most, but I find it stressful, or maybe that's normal. I'm not quite sure. I'm so used to feeling so free with everything else that I create that, you know, as soon as there's... I put this pressure on myself because I know how important it is to me. I think it's just me doing my own head in, but... Hopefully you can relate to that. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I'd be curious to know if there's something out there that you think is absolutely perfect. Like, you know, The Wizard of Oz is another one for me. I love to reinterpret a lot of that. But what I find really, really difficult is to reinterpret the way that Dorothy is. Like, I wouldn't try and draw her with a hairstyle she didn't have. I wouldn't try and change up the ruby slippers to be, like, green or anything. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> she is blue gingham, red ruby slippers, and one of two hairstyles in my head. But, like, I, I don't know. I struggle with that. So, I, uh, I, I, in the hopes of trying to get past that and get through that and start to really open up and enjoy using subject matter that I'm absolutely enamored by, I think I'm just going to try and push through and keep doing it until I have a breakthrough moment. But I'll be honest, I'm not there yet. And, uh, and this piece, you know, I, I felt tempted to scrap, but there was so much that I did like about it that I just thought, I'll keep it in here. And I think it's just important to have a bit of a self-critiquing moment so that we know where, where we can go next, what to avoid next, how to make things better for ourselves. So I'm going to kind of take you through the process of me self-critiquing this as you're seeing it here. Now, at this point, I'm loving it. I sketched it out in graphite. I'm doing very loose watercolor techniques, uh, very water plopping in the background like Ali Brown does. And uh, But I actually used an angled brush to create the rock. I wanted to do a bit like an urban sketching type thing with watercolor in, um, in just really hitting up the shadows and leaving the highlights so that your eye kind of is deceived into thinking that that 3D object is what you're supposed to think it is. Now, in this case, it kind of looks like it is supposed to be the platform they're sitting on. It's technically like the rock, um, the, the rock that they sit, or the, it's, it's inspired by a rock from the movie, but it's not the actual rock. <laughs> uh, these three aren't together in this formation, but the, um, you know, for all intents and purposes for our mermaid piece, they are. So I'm really loving that. I loved the angled brush look of that. I think it's very dynamic. I'd love to try that again. The issue I kind of felt was when I went to color in the mermaids, they were outlined in graphite. So I felt like there was a very definite, you know, edge that I had to stay inside of. So my, my brain kicked in and started thinking like, you know, when I'm coloring, like, oh, do it neat, stay inside the edge. Now, the problem with that is that the rest of the piece was so loose 
that I started to become a little rigid when I colored it in. I did it a little bit abstract, like I was leaving the brush strokes, I was making sure there was texture in it, but ultimately I was overcorrecting myself to keep the watercolor contained in those lines, which ultimately made it look like it was supposed to be neat, even though it wasn't. Um, so here's where the contrast was kind of starting to fall apart. The dynamic, the light and shade, the, uh, the contrast between background and foreground and focal point and, you know, receding kind of, um, less focused on elements. I don't know what the word for that is, but, um, you know, the contrast was starting to become off. So I realized at this point that the problem I was having was that I was overcorrecting and the graphite was, was making me feel like it was stuck inside those lines. So in going forward, I should next time probably just sketch in a colored pencil that I wouldn't feel the need to stay inside of. I could kind of abstract paint with the angled brush, you know, their fins and their hair and, you know, maybe just hit up the details in their face. Um, or what I could have done is just gone completely contrasting and done gouache and or acrylic paint and made a flat 2D color of the mermaids. And that would have really brought out the difference between the background and the foreground. So. I don't know. Well, not total background because they're on the rock, uh, but background elements and foreground elements. The focal point was the mermaids, but I think what I tend to look at more than the mermaids in this is the actual background and the rock. So I, I didn't do my job there in, in separating the focal points, but this is what practice is for. This is what it's all about. This is mermaid results may vary. This is one of those days where, you know, unfortunately <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I needed to go through this process, this process to know what to change about it next. Now I wasn't going to redo it because I've done, I've redone a ton and, uh, and I think it's important to show you this part. Um, I have tried to draw another Mer Neverland mermaid in mermaid before, like this mermaid that didn't make it that you haven't seen yet. Um, I've got critiques for that as well. <laughs> uh, but I think this was more interesting to show you. And to be honest, I don't hate the overall thing. I think there's a problem with a few of the perspectives. Um, like with the mermaids, I think the proportions are a little off on the one below and the two above, but ultimately I am more happy with this than I'm not. So I'm going to leave it in the collection. I love the color palette. I love the, um, the background elements. I just kind of wish I'd redone the mermaids, which I could probably try and redo on the iPad if I really wanted to. So remember, there's always a way to fix something. There's always a way to elevate it or to at least take something from it. Um, so for this, you know, I more enjoyed it than I didn't. I got more good out of it than I didn't. So that's why it gets to stay in. The other ones, you're just going to have a laugh at, but <laughs> the bloopers video, I can't wait for that bloopers video. It is lit with content that I just was not happy with. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into my um, self-critiquing process. It's really not as scary as you'd think. You're just noticing problems and things you do and don't like. And that's all. Until tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>